Kia ora, welcome. My name is Sophie Watson and today on the Education Outdoors New Zealand mini podcast series we're talking about EOTC philosophies and safety management systems. In this conversation I'm joined by two staff members from Newbury School who took part in the Revisioning School Camps professional development. For those of you who haven't heard about Revisioning School Camps, this PLD supports teachers and schools to develop localised, place responsive and student centred school camp programs. We hope by sharing these case studies, you'll come away feeling inspired to revision your own camp experiences or try a few of the awesome ideas shared by case study schools. If you would like further information about the Revisioning School Camps PLD or access to more case studies and resources, please visit the Education Outdoors New Zealand website. Newbury School is a rural school and can be found a short drive away from Palmerston North. It caters for around 170 children from years 1 to 8. Simon Marshall, the school's principal, and Mia Brown, the assistant principal, have been leading the changes to Newbury's EOTC approach and practices. In our conversation, we break down the process they went through, talk about why involving the staff and students is essential, and translate some of those tricky terms used to describe aspects of safety management. Just a heads up, this conversation was recorded online, and unfortunately our connection was a bit unstable. We've tried our best to edit out the disruptions, but we apologise if some of the audio is a little hard to hear. Mia begins our conversation by identifying some key questions that stimulated the school in beginning this work. The key for us was developing a clear why. Why do we spend all this time on camps? And, and the organisation, as any teacher will know, is immense. So why put all this effort in? What's, what's the point? What are we wanting out of this? Why do we spend all this money? So that kind of was our starting point, developing a really clear why as a school. If you've listened to the previous case studies we've shared, you might have noticed a bit of a theme starting to appear. All of our case study schools have reiterated the importance of starting with the why. EOTC and camp experiences form an important part of many schools' identity or character and are often steeped in tradition. While this can add richness to these learning experiences, it can also mean that without critical, regular reflection, the original purpose of camp may no longer reflect the needs or interests of the school community. Starting the revisioning process with evaluating your why and keeping this front and centre during this work means that all further decisions are more likely to lead to the outcomes you're looking for. There was some really great stuff happening already at Newbury when Simon and I both got here, but we felt there was a few things that we could, I guess, make even better. So firstly, it was around the progression and what the learners were experiencing through the years with camps at Newbury. Um, there wasn't really a clear progression it, they, it didn't really have any why behind it. We also wanted to bring in both the Enviro School focus, which is we're an Enviro School, and that's something that's important, an important part of our, I guess, our school culture. And as well as that, we had newly developed drive values that we wanted to embed as well. So we settled on um, the acronym of Drive because the different values that we that we came up with fit quite nicely into that. We're also next to a state highway, so we thought it was quite apt that given all the cars that are travelling past our school, each that we that we sort of reflect that. How can we use the EOTC experiences to really develop those and help enhance in a way that we couldn't otherwise, you know, being on school site? I mean, what better place to develop those skills than through EOTC experiences? Give a bit of a background for our listeners. If you could just quickly give us even part of the camp progression that you've developed to show where you've gone with it. Okay, so our year one and twos, as I said, they have an overnight stay that is on site and all the experiences are on site. And the focus of that really is just a key competencies and drive values focus. It's about team building and developing their, their confidence. And, you know, for a lot of them, they won't have stayed away from home before. So it's a very new experience and doing that with the year ones and twos, the aim is, is that when they get to the year three and four overnight stay, which is a little bit bigger, they're still on site or potentially we've talked about, um, they may stay at a marae or something very, very local, um, but the activities and things are more outside of school. 
So it kind of a, it's a nice progression from the year one and two to the three, four experience. And then we get up to our year five and sixes who go on a yearly full week, full, well, five day, four night school week camp. Um, and for them, they go on even years, they do what we call bush camp. And then on the odd years, they do a valley camp. So we have a kind of a focus of each. The bush camp is around the enviro theme, enviro school theme, living landscapes. And then the odd year is around the enviro school theme of water for life. Mm -hmm. So there's very strong science links, as well as still, obviously, the um, KCs and drive values, which really, for me, always are front and centre of our camps. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we get to our seniors, our year seven and eight students, we really wanted to up the experiences that they got and make it a very clear progression on from what the year five sixes do. So it may sound insane, but we actually do... Um, two camps a year with our year seven and eights. We do a full week camp of the five days, four nights, and then we do a two night, three day one as well. So in even years, we do adventure camp is very much about being outside your comfort zone and doing things that are challenging you. So we're doing kind of the very typical camp type things of high ropes and zip lining. And also in an even year, we do a snow camp where we go up to, to Kino and have two days up there of skiing or snowboarding. And then in the odd years, we have a city camp, which we actually have named Careers Camp, mm -hmm. that is focused on, I guess, it's, it's very much social sciences driven, and the kids give us ideas of the careers that they're interested in learning about, what they potentially think they might want to do when they grow up. And we frame the camp from what they tell us about what they want to learn more about. So the other camp on an odd year camp and is a survival camp and basically they have to feed themselves in small groups for three, uh, three days, two nights. So they have to plan their meals, they have to plan pretty much every aspect of it themselves. They have to organise where they're going to sleep organize a tent between them. If they don't have access to a tent, then we obviously step in and do a little bit of helping. But in amongst the group, they have to source a tent, put it up themselves, cook their own food. It's, it's very much a back to basics. That sounds fantastic. And I think just the range of experiences that you're offering your students, very rich and diverse experiences that obviously tap into a whole lot of learning areas and the key competencies in your your drive values. So I can definitely see the why coming through and the progression, a really strong progression coming through and what you've developed. Internal evaluation is something that's really important for us as a school. So as we went through our first year at Newbury, we were sort of looking at what, what things we could improve and looking at what had gone before and things like that. So consultation sort of came in many different forms, but we always get um, parents to review what they've experienced when they've been camp parent helpers. Um, we talk to the learners about what's been the positives for them and what things they think we could do better. So yeah, that's certainly part of the process. The other thing I guess that I didn't mention before was that the documentation was another really key change for us. The documentation at Newbury was extensive, but it didn't fit with what we knew was current good practice courses that the, the eons run about updating your paperwork and then starting the work with you, Sophie, on kind of revisioning the, the documentation was something that kind of kept popping up as something we needed to do some significant work on. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to do with the documentation too was we felt that for a lot of our team was that they they knew the few sheets that they had to go through before heading away on camp. There were a few bits and pieces that they might use on camp. But whilst there was a real extensive package for EOTC, they didn't uh, didn't feel like they had any sort of hand or voice in designing it. And so we really wanted to make sure that the documentation that Mayor's worked really hard on is something that we've taken the team along with us as we go so that they have a real, yeah, sort of, that they feel like they've been part of its design and that they understand the real clear purpose behind the camps through the years. They're understanding what we're wanting to achieve through our EOTC experience in regards to what Mia's talked about in, in developing our drive values and like sort of weaving aspects of the Enviro School curriculum 
into the camps and the EOT experiences. So really just bringing everyone to the same point and, and helping them understand the why, I think is the most important part. And so it sounds like um, that's almost been a process of professional development for a lot of your staff as well. And so I'm wondering um, what impact have you seen from that, not just in terms of updating the documentation and the philosophy or realigning that, but also in terms of staff confidence or competence in delivering EOTC? Yeah, I think having a clear purpose for each camp, that was kind of one of the things we got into early on was what are the kids getting out of this particular camp and how does this differ from other camps? And I think having that as a really clear kind of, I guess, clear, succinct message in our EOTC guidelines is that the, the staff know what they're trying to achieve in terms of what the kids learn. And I think that's a really big part of it so that they're a lot more focused and being able to choose activities, choose outside providers, choose where to go on camps. And there's been a bit, quite a bit of kind of deliberation around that, choosing the camp site that fits the purpose of what we want to achieve. So that's, I think, been one part of it. I'm sure many of us can speak to experiences of positive and negative change management. As Mia and Simon have shared, Involving the whole school community in the revisioning process, and particularly staff regarding updates to the school's safety management plan and practices, have resulted in much more effective and positive change. EONS recently conducted a significant study of EOTC in Aotearoa, New Zealand. One of the findings of this research identified the importance of having regular and well-informed professional development. Good PD plays an essential role ensuring staff feel confident and competent to deliver relevant, meaningful and safe EOTC. If you haven't checked out the EOTC research report, I highly recommend doing so. There are some fantastic examples of practice that support thriving EOTC and you may find some of the insights useful in supporting or validating your own EOTC programs. You can find a copy of the research report on the EONS website under resources and publications. In terms of documentation, I think everyone's got a much better understanding of what documentation we need to use and why. It's not just a get it done, tick the box, because, you know, for a lot of people, the EOTC planning stuff is, right, we've got to do this, got to get it signed off, but there's a kind of a clear understanding behind why. And then now with our standard operating procedures as well, we created them as a staff after they had a model to be able to kind of work off. We created those together and we're just going to keep adding to them as we need them for new activities or things we think of that we need them for. And I think everyone's had a hand in that, so everyone kind of gets that process a lot more too. As we were going through that process with the rest of our team, it no longer became we'll pull up our RAMs that we used to use, we'll change the date and we'll change the venue like that um, and then submit that. Without through and really familiarise themselves with what may go wrong or what could go wrong and, and, and think that's, that's, that was sort of my feeling of what the practice was in the past. But certainly by, through me running the, the, the session during our teacher only day, it meant that Everyone had a hand in developing, you know, those SOPs and, and then when we came back and shared and then reflected on that as a whole team, we were able to then give input again. So it really helped everyone start at the ground level and, and really think through some of those particulars and think about the things that they needed to be aware of and then also flowing on from that. Right, what's the information that we're going to then share with our learners, share with the adults who are coming and supporting us on these EOTC experiences? We actually talk through all the safety stuff with the learners so they actually know what the SOPs are and they kind of know all the parts and the risk management part of that using the risk assessment forms with the kids so that they are all clear on the things that we think potentially could be a risk and what we're going to do as a whole team, so bringing them in as part of that, what we're going to do to make sure we don't have those things go wrong. And I guess you've both touched on this, but um, the key part of safety management is the, the way that it's actually carried out. And so it sounds like you've really brought your staff and your students on board in terms of enacting all the procedures and all the documentation. So that just sounds fantastic. 
talking about the process. So how did you actually go about doing this work? Yeah, it, it, it is a big job. I guess that's first thing, going with your eyes open, there is a lot involved in kind of revamping EOTC because there are so many components. So as I said, first it started with the internal, internal evaluation. We looked at what we do, why we do it, where we do it, how effective is it. So our evaluation process consists of kind of triangulating learner feedback, adult helper feedback, and the teacher evaluations around all aspects of the EOTC experience. So I think that's kind of step one, is you've got to really evaluate what you've got going on already. Mm -hmm. um, we saw some gaps in certain areas we can improve, and that's kind of where we got to next. So I guess the next step is a really clear why, and I'll keep saying this because mm -hmm. it, just, yeah, it just keeps coming up, I guess. What do we want our kids to get out of it? And then from there, we formed our philosophy. And the philosophy is where everything else kind of then stemmed from. So I guess that's kind of step step three is develop a philosophy based on all those bits of information that you've gathered and the, what you actually want the kids to be getting out of it, the learners to be getting. From there, unfortunately, somebody has to really get their head around all the documentation. And in our case, it's been me. So I've been coming back and translating to everybody else, SOPs and SMPs and RISs, you know, we're used to RAMs, everyone knows RAMs, and when I sort of said that RAMs are no longer current, everybody kind of goes, what? So mm. getting my head around all that all so that I could clearly communicate to our team what was involved um, in EOTC documentation these days was a really important step. And as I said before, the EONS PD has just been an absolute necessity I went to the one where they unpack what the documentation is all about and what all the different acronyms mean and what you need to do for them. And that, that was so, so helpful. EOTC safety management can be a mind-boggling topic and getting your head around the many acronyms can be a challenge. While the Revisioning School Camps PLD is focused on EOTC philosophy and curriculum development, safety management goes hand in hand with this work. While this podcast episode doesn't go into depth around the EOTC guidelines or legislation, here's a quick translation of some of the common safety management terms and acronyms. Many of you would have heard of the term RAMS, or Risk Analysis Management System. For a long time, this was one of the core documents used to identify and manage risks. Safety Action Plans, or SAPs, were also used. However, both the RAMs and SAPs are no longer current practice and have been replaced by a RAS, which is a Risk Analysis and Supervision form, and a Safe Operating Procedures document, which is a SOP. All of this may sound complicated, but these updates have helped to provide greater clarity and reduce double up on paperwork. A school's overarching safety management document is called the SMP, or Safety Management Plan. This document forms the basis of why and how you plan to manage safety in your EOTC programs. The RAS and SOPs, or Risk Analysis and Supervision, and Standard Operating Procedures documents sit under your overarching safety management plan and provide specific information and practices around the different EOTC activities you provide, for example, a visit to the zoo or an overnight tramping experience. The EOTC guidelines, which can be found on TKI, is your number one place for all things EOTC safety management. Some of you may have the original document, which is lovingly referred to some as the blue book. However, aspects of this document are out of date. The most recent updates to the guidelines was in 2018, so it's best to refer to the TKI website. Here you'll also find safety templates, tools and online learning modules that unpack the guidelines further. EONS also delivers a one and two day safety management workshop which provides essential information for schools and particularly EOTC coordinators around current EOTC practice. Please check out our website for more information. Once you've got your head around it, it's developing the safety management plan is probably most important because that's the that's the overall overall documentation for the for EOTC. Yeah, basically we reviewed our current safety management plan and looked at what was worth keeping and what what didn't really fit. And I guess bringing in the relevant terminology, relevant mm -hmm. bits and pieces that need to be part of that. And basically from there, we just trialed it. 
So before we took it to any other staff, my co-teacher and I tried the new REST systems and using the documentation and the planning sheets and everything for one of our camps. And from there, we troubleshooted what didn't make sense or what did we find hard to use and kind of fix that sort of stuff up before yeah, we awesome. then up star. Yeah, and it's always ongoing. I guess that's the other thing is like, even now we don't print the documentation out, the overall plans and that, and we keep adding to them. We print the bits we need when we need them, but mm -hmm. it's a living document. Yeah, that's awesome. What I really like about your process that you've gone through is, like you've said, you've trialled it and you haven't just rolled it out without having a really deep understanding or looking at the implications that that might have for some of your staff or student and staff safety. And also that, you know, you recognise that it is a, a living, um, very changeable thing. And it's all about being responsive to the changes in your environment and with your students and also legislative change. So now that you've made these changes and embedded a really strong system and philosophy, what impact have you seen that have on your EOTC? Consistently, the feedback from our parents and our um, community who help us, especially on camps, is overwhelmingly positive in terms of how well it's been thought through. Really pleased with the approach, really, really pleased with the outcomes in terms of yeah, developing those drive values that we've talked about and it just been a meaningful time as an experience in and of itself rather mm -hmm. than going away for a week and trying some new things. I guess they can see the why behind it as well and I think that's by and large because that you know is clear through the documentation and everyone's on board with that. So I think us going in with that really clear focus and wanting to develop that, um, you know, the values and the dispositions, as well as wanting to get out some good quality learning in terms of the back end of the curriculum, in terms of, you know, curriculum areas, has proved to be really successful. I know that it is a really um, involved process and can take a lot of time and energy to work your way through it. Do you have any top tips for schools that are looking to do similar to what you have in refreshing their EOTC philosophy and procedures? Yeah, definitely. Our, our top tip would be just to do it and don't be scared of the documentation, but just pick somewhere to start and start. I think the other thing that we've found really useful, and I know Mia has, is contacting EONS and, you know, the help that you've provided has been really valuable. And so being able to start with what we already have, look at how that, how that sort of marries up or reflects the practice that, you know, would be a good example and changing it to align with that. I think the other top tip is look, don't, don't just start from scratch yourself. Like find, find some examples from other schools that you think have done a good job and that you can see you know, a natural progression and a similar sense of what they're about and the their thinking of behind EOTC experiences. And when you find or feel like you've found one that, that sort of matches up with the direction that you want your EOTC experiences to head, get in contact with them and, and, and you know, work alongside them. For us, for a lot of our rest stuff, the using what Eons had as examples mm -hmm. was really, really helpful because I found by the schools that a lot of schools aren't actually there yet. They, they don't, some people I've talked to didn't even know that the RAMs weren't current mm -hmm. anymore. So I think finding examples has, has been a little bit of a challenge, but the examples that Eons have ready were where I started all of our planning stuff. Starting with that why, starting with that purpose and working backwards, I think has, has been useful for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely reiterate that. I think often it's really easy for us to dive straight into looking at documentation or at practices without you yeah, really stopping and considering why are we doing this, um, like you kind of referred to Mia. And so I think that that's a really important point. And I also really like what you said about connecting with other schools and teachers who are going through this process or have already have strong systems. Um, and I would definitely recommend reaching out to, to other people that you feel show good practice in that area. We're happy to talk to people if there's anyone who, you know, people listening think, oh gosh, I'd really like some insight into this particular aspect. I'm quite happy to, to talk to people if people want to flick us an email or... Fantastic. I'm sure you, you'll get a lot of people calling you up and sending you emails now, but um, thank you. That's very generous of you.
and um, we'll make sure to, to link your details in the case study. If you are the EOTC coordinator or responsible for overseeing the delivery of EOTC at your school, make sure you're a member of the National EOTC Coordinator Database. It's free to be part of and provides essential information and updates regarding all things EOTC and safety management. You can also access safety management support as part of the service. If you're involved in delivering EOTC at your school, but are not the EOTC coordinator, your coordinator should still be passing on key messages to you from the EOTC updates. If you aren't receiving these, touch base with your coordinator to check that your school is part of the database and remind them to forward the updates on to you. You can find a link to the national database on the homepage of the EONS website. Thank you very much to the both of you for your time today and for sharing your process and the outcomes of your revisioning your EOTC policy and procedures. And I know that you did have some really good stuff that you were working with already and it's just about strengthening those things. Revisioning your EOTC and school camp experiences can seem like an overwhelming task. However, as Mia and Simon have reminded us, you don't need to be starting from scratch. Begin by reviewing your current philosophy and practice and identify what is worth keeping and developing further. At the heart of EOTC is rich and impactful learning experiences for our students, so remember to stay connected to your why. If you're about to begin this process or are partway through, kia kaha. Remember to reach out to other schools and teachers who exemplify good practice and use the resources available through TKI and EONS. We hope you found today's case study helpful. Thanks for joining us. Ma te wa.